have no human form. I have no human form. Jacob, what have they done to you? Hey. Lily Rose, good morning. Hey, George. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, it's good to see you again. 1917. Last time I spoke to you in San Francisco. So it's good to see you again. And you. Thank you for joining me today. Talk about Wolf. What an intriguing film. I was so fascinated with this movie. You know, at first you laugh at these characters who think and act like a duck, a squirrel, a German shepherd. But that quickly changes when you realize this is a medical condition, species identity disorder, and this internal battle going on inside their minds and emotional trauma. You know, George, Jacob believes he's a wolf trapped in a man's body, eats and sleeps and lives like one. How did you mimic a wolf's movement? That was really fascinating. I, would, I think I, I think it, it, well, it's a sort of there's, there was a kind of whole journey to the movement of it. But I think for me, it's like my only way to understand the role that's sort of difficult to talk about without wanting to give too much away. But to me, he is a wolf. He is. And, and that's the only way to understand the character is to know him as a wolf and feel as he does that he is a wolf but he's just in a man's body rather than thinking that he thinks that he's a wolf because then immediately you're sort of you're building up the layers of being removed from from that 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 complexity in that circumstance so to me he is one and that and that's and then the, the kind of the journey of playing the character and physicalizing him was like okay well how do you how do you follow all of those instincts and learning about those instincts and how again, a human version of how you imagine a wolf to perceive the world, how do you perceive them with a human physicality? Um, as, and then adding the sort of, well, also because he is unequivocally in the body that, that I share as well, how does a wolf's instincts get processed by a human mind? And what is a human mind? And what makes us human? And all of those questions is what drew me to the character. So, um, but in answer to your question, there was a lot of hours crawling as well. Of just, <laughs> Try to get that, that get your body kind of feeling comfortable to move in that way, which is the way that he felt most comfortable. And Lily Rose, you play Wildcat. Uh, would you say she's been committed to this institution? She gets a lot. Uh, she gets away with a lot with her behavior. <laughs> um, well, Wildcat um, holds kind of a different space in the in the in the facility than all of the other patients because she's been there for a really long time, raised there by by uh, these doctors and by Dr. Angeli specifically. Their their relationship is also something that was really interesting to me and really kind of uh, informed a lot about the character and and the kind of space that she occupies at the clinic. Um, but yeah, she's almost. I mean, and, and you know, she says it in this scene. It's like she's not really a patient, but she doesn't really work there either. She's almost like a, she's almost kind of like a, a, a ghost or something. Of the place. <laughs> and, you know, and also your monologue at J Jacob's cage, what an emotional moment for Wildcat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, that was, uh, that I think is, is, you know, and especially for, 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 characters that have learned how to funnel all, all of their emotion into this kind of like animal projection putting words to your to your feelings I think would be specific, would be you know particularly difficult um so that was a that was a really big moment I think for for Wildcat to be opening up to him in that way I think it's a you know it's a uh putting you know it, it can be hard for all of us I think to put words to our to our emotions and to our vulnerability sometimes and especially for somebody who's not learned really to do that uh you know, that was an important moment and George, the clinic is run by the zookeeper. His therapies are often abusive, violent, sadistic. Jacob is led around on a leash and collar, cattle prods, verbal abuse. That's not treatment. No, it's not. And that's, you know, that's, 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 I mean, it's, you're, you're exactly right. It's not, they're, they're not receiving the, the help that they're deemed to be being, being given there. And, that, and that's the circumstance of the story. And I, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's there to, to kind of, have an, an even stronger kind of side to 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 rub up against you know so, so to kind of you need i think these these big strong contrasting ideas to um to kind of explore all the kind of all the themes and emotions in the middle of it and uh and you know you, you need those themes to be contrasting and particularly strong so that's why i think the the, th the therapies in inverted commas are as intense as they are well, thank you both for giving me one of the most intriguing films of the year. I enjoyed it immensely, and uh, I wish you the best of luck with the film. Thank you for joining me. Cheers. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Nice to Have see a you. nice day.